box plots, because you're right, we didn't do box plots. What I want to do, I want to fire the lights back up, and I want to recap. I want to recap where we are right now. I mean, besides the Polius 208, we know that. But I want to, I want to, I want to make sure we remember what the hell we were talking about last. We had an exam, and your brain just flushes everything out after that, right? So, on the exam, we talked about the measures of center. And the measures of spread, and I love that. Measures of variety, I like that word too, Andrea. And they're not going to go away. I mean, I, we're not going to forget that we know that now, because that would be silly. Because they're so important. They're a humongous part of our daily lives. I mean, just today we were measuring um, forearms and wrists in Math 105 to see if there's any kind of a relationship between. Three so numbers this back 105. See if there's any kind of a relationship between the length from your wrist to your middle finger, from your wrist back to your elbow. Allegedly, there's a special ratio that exists in human beings, and it, we were trying to see if it showed up. We didn't really see a whole lot of it show up. We were kind of so we're, we're, we're curious, but we had to allow for the variation in our body types because if you actually put those measurements on the board, you would expect that there was a relationship, that there'd be like kind of a straight line relationship. But it wasn't. It was noisy. It was all over the place. But it still trended upward from left to right. Not super obviously, but it did trend upward. So when you allow for a correct level of variation, the center becomes evident. And that's why we don't want to forget about that. We want to keep that, keep that around. But we have to add something else to that. And the thing we started adding last time are called measures of, rel of relative, that should be the measure, relative position. We started talking about this last Monday with Max and his pediatrician appointment. We talked about it a little bit more after your exam when we collected your guys' state data. We're going we're to revisit that with the, docs, uh, the uh, doc plot up there, or the uh, box plot up there. But the reason I like relative position is it allows me a tool where I can still talk about the data set in whole, even if the average could potentially be skewed. That's why I like it when I talk about exam grades, because they're always skewed. They're always skewed. You guys always tend to have left skewed, right leaning data. Why? Because you kick butt, that's why. But because of that, I can't talk about your class average. I can't say that the average is a 37. Well, I can say it. I can totally say the average is a 37. But I can't look at myself in the mirror at night. I can't go to bed with a clear conscience. A 37. Shame on you, fool. The median was a 43. Ah. The median was a 43. Half of you did better than a 43. How do I feel about that? Stay with me. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You did better than a 43. So, what we do, what we do then is we add another tool to our toolbox. Does that make sense? Maybe if you want to think about it tool-wise, this would be like metric imperial. So sometimes the metric tool won't work in the material and the imperial bolt. And you can make it work, let's say it's your bolts. So it's better to use the right tool. So let's revisit our state data. Our state data. Now I don't want the entire data set. I think I have it in my TIs. Could you guys just give me the summary statistics, the five number summary? And I'm going to have to move that camera, aren't I? I bet you I am. So in other words, I want the, the, the minimum Lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum. This is about as far as we got last time, if I remember correctly. Abby, you got it right there for me, if you don't mind. Thank you. The minimum is five. Five? Eleven. Eleven? Thirteen. Thirteen. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Thank you so much. Perfect. Perfect. Now, these are all great. Pick one of them and tell me what it means. Any one of them. Any one of them, what it means. If I were going to go with the, please, Nick. Minimum of the five, the fewest states. Fewest states we have been to were five, beautiful. How about the maximum? Someone in here visited 28 and nobody visited more. Let's ask a question. What percentile is the person who visited five states? It's almost a trick question, Andrea. 25% around the first quartile. That's the 25th percentile. Yeah, that's, that's the 25th percentile. What percentile is this person right here? They're the 0th percentile. Remember the definition of percentile? You could say, no, it's been a week. That's okay. 
The definition of percentile is the percentage of data that you exceed. And if the person who visited five states is the minimum, they don't exceed anybody. They're the lowest percentile, so they're the zeroth percentile. Q1 is 11. 11 states cuts off the lowest 25% from the upper 75%. That'll be, that'll be way more obvious with the box plot. We'll get into that in a second. How about this guy right here? Who's he? He's Q. You're both right. I heard Q2, and I heard P50. And you're both right. It's the second quartile and the 50th percentile. But both of which say the same thing. Quartiles are just dividing the data up into quarters where percentiles break it up into percentages. So rather than a 100 little pieces, it's four quarters. There are also quintiles and octals and decils and all kinds of other divisions. I think we talked about quintiles last time, Danny. But the one I'm gonna focus on, if I can really drive home the point of quartiles to you guys, anything else you experience when you read government documents will make perfect sense. Good, 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 good. Q3? Good, that's your 75th percentile. Which means if I look at 23, that means 75% of you visited fewer than 23 states. 75% of you have visited fewer than 23. And this is a little tricky. Max is 28. Whoever was, that's the most states visited by someone in this class. What percentile would that person be? It's a bit of a trick question. 99. 99 point something, or maybe, it depends on the sample size, doesn't it? We have to know how many people were in the class. Does that make sense? So suppose, for example, there were 30 people in the class. Well, then the percentile for this person would be 29 out of 30 because they exceeded everybody except themselves. If there were only 10 people in the class, it would be 9 out of 10, which is the 90th percentile. If there were two people in the class, we'd, we'd be stupid to talk about, but it'd be the 50th percentile, which would also be the median, which is why it gets confusing on small data sets. Somebody said the 99th percentile. That's a fair bet for a large, largish data set that's about the 99th percentile, although it's closer to like the... 97th, I think, for us, or 96th. But it, it's the largest percentile if you're, if you're at the max. Unless you share that with somebody else. If we had two people that visited 28, then they can't exceed themselves or the other 28. Then you're down to the 94th percentile. Does, does, that, does that kind of make sense mathematically-ish? It, depend, it depends on how many are in the class. Here's what I want you to remember. As far as the first measure of relative position, remember what a percentile means. A percentile means it's the percent of data you exceed as a data point. So in order to know the percent of data you exceed as a data point, you have to know how many data points there are. I mean, I've been told that that makes sense. If you know that you've been to 15 states, in order to know your percentile, you have to figure out how many you have exceeded. Is that, is, that, is that make sense? Is that believable? I hope that's believable. I'll have you calculate your own percentiles momentarily because I want to put our data back up on the board uh, with the box plot. And we're going to put the dot plot with the box plot, which is how I like looking at it. So that, keep that in your mind for right now. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that momentarily. Okay. Now the quartiles are another way of measuring that. I think we all understand that now. And there are many, many more besides percentile and quartile. Quintile, decile, octal. All it is, is it's a way of dividing up data into more or fewer chunks, right? Quartiles divided up into four pieces, four 25% pieces. We're going to draw a picture of that soon. Percentiles, chop it up into 100. We're not we're ever going to draw that. That's ridiculous. That takes way too long. Quintiles aren't bad. For some reason, the government loves them. They love quintiles. But, I mean, if you understand quartiles, you understand quintiles. And I like quartiles because the median's in there. A quintile wouldn't have the median. 20th percentile, 40th, 60th, 80th. And technically, the 100th quintile, but I don't like calling it that because there's no such thing as the 100th percentile, so there shouldn't be a fifth quintile. Um, anyway. Thank you. So, why don't I like this representation? Here's your five number summary. There's your five number summary. It's a little bit. It's a little bit misleading to have it written like that, which is why nobody actually writes it just like that. They usually put it in a box plot form. Can anybody see why? It's okay if you can't right now. Can anybody see why this might be a smidge misleading? Because it's all clustered in around 13, 23, 11. It's all... When you say clustered, Nick, I love where you're going with that. What exactly do you mean by clustered? I guess that means that's skewed in a way. It is, but can you see it very obviously here? That's, I think, my problem. What's the distance here? What's the distance here? What's the distance here? 
What's the distance here? Those are very different numbers, correct? But when you put them right next to each other like this, you can't tell the differences. So the cluster versus the skew is not at all obvious. Just like with your test grades. I could have easily put the five number summary up there, but the box plot shows, just like Andreas said, the variety in the lower half versus the upper half. That's why we draw these things as box plots. So let's swing over here.